Prayer. Precursor is what? Prolonged or protracted or prevailing prayers. You know, the first time I met Apostle Arume, I almost, I almost turned back and went. He said, if you are 20 years old and you have not prayed in tongues for 10 hours, he said you are a clown. <laughs> See, there is something long prayers does to your soul. You will not know how weak you are until you begin to trade on the altar. The altar reveals to you your weaknesses. And what it does is that it develops you so that your weaknesses can become your strength. That's why Jesus came in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That means the only way a man can be restored to be like God is by prayer. It is man's default mode to pray. We were created for prayer. Because prayer is a spiritual infrastructure for connecting essentially to God. So a man who does not pray does not understand how to relate with a spirit. He may study about that spirit from books. But for him to come into the environment of a spirit and learn the ways of that spirit, he must engage that spirit experientially. Prayer is the only way that is available to us to interact with the spirit of God until we become like him. So Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. But there are many believers who are not praying. You may think you are strong. If you want to check your energy in the spirit, go and begin to pray. You may bring a macho man here who can lift weight for 10 hours. And then all his muscles are like this. You now say, this one is strong. Then you bring a lanky person who is an intercessor. He says, okay, pray in tongues for two hours. After 15 minutes, the macho man will fall down. But that's when the guy who is lanky is charging. After three hours, he begins to jump like this. After five hours, he's walking like this. It, when he has hit ten hours, that time all his spiritual senses have activated. At that time, he becomes a spirit. He can look at you and tell you that, Kai, don't travel tomorrow. You didn't tell him. Something has activated. He has picked his tools in the spirit. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That means there is a strength in the spirit that is not natural. You can begin with God with your natural strength like you came to church by ATP. But for you to do the business we are doing in the altar, you need to receive another kind of strength. He said in Isaiah 40 verse 28, he said, have you not heard? Has he not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? That means when they check the lexicon of the spirit, the only being that does not have the ability to faint or be weary is God. But they also went further because there's a wisdom. We have checked the whole realms. Only God has the ability to continue operating and he doesn't weak, get weary or faint. The reason is because he's the El Shaddai. As the El Shaddai, he's the multi-breasted one. He sustains all and is sustained by none. Depletion is not consistent with his nature. He said, have you not heard? Because this thing is popular in the spirit realm. All the spirits are aware that God doesn't know how to grow weak. But he now said, there is a technology that he made available to humankind. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. Something happens to them. A dimension from God is downloaded. So they mount up with wings like eagles. He said, suddenly, a man, because before he gave you the contract, he said, even the young men shall be weary and shall utterly fall. That means among the human race, the young men are the most strongest. He said, but compared with the spirit of God, the young men have a destiny of fainting and becoming weary. But whether you are young, old, or weak, there is a technology in God. They say they that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like the eagles. Something now happens to them. They say when they run, they will not be weary. When they walk, they will not faint. Why? They have become like God. So the possibilities that are locked up in God is also possible to operate in a man. The thing is not because the man is young or old. What will make the dimensions of God find expression in a man is his, his wisdom to take advantage of prayer. Because when he begins to pray, what makes God who he is and gives him his peculiarity, those same dimensions can begin to express themselves through a man. So you can see a man of 50 years, he's praying in tongues from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And then you now say, okay, uh, uh, if Baba can do it, me too, I can do it because I'm a young man. So you now came. You will wake up. Around 12.30, Baba is still praying. You see, 
there was a young preacher, Apostle told us. He went to see one of the fathers of the faith. And when he came, the man of God said, okay, we'll pray in the night. So around 10, the man of God said, okay, let's pray. So the young guy stood up. The roof of the house was shaking like this. After three hours, the young man went, and he slept off. He woke up around 1 a.m. Baba would just walk and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Around 3 a.m., he woke up. Baba was, thank you, Jesus. His prayer was going deeper. When the young man woke up around 6 a.m., Baba was still praying. Around 8 a.m., he saw Baba in the bathroom showering. Thank you, Jesus. And Baba went to the office like that. The man now came and knelt down <laughs> to be imparted. If your advantage is your gift and your charisma, you are weak. You will not know until you enter into the battle arena. Your advantage is not in your body. It's in the mountains of Zion. It is prayer that will take you there. Sometimes we say this thing humorously so people can relate. <laughs> my sisters, when we were young, they were beauty queens. In my house, I don't know why God did it like this, but me, I'm ugly. Maybe it's that ugliness that made me to pursue God. <laughs> when they were 24, 25, all their shoes were tall like this. That was when Brazilian wig was raining. They would go and fix one thirty-two thousand, and then they would be walking like this. When I say, what type of shoe is, shoe is this? They say, it's choker. That time, every man that saw them rushed to them until they became, one became 30, the other two became 28. That time, they now began to pray for marriage. Until one became 34, the other two became 32. That was when they realized that marriage is not a function of beauty. They now knew that the economy of marriage works by favor. You know, when they were young, they couldn't get the wisdom. They thought beauty was an advantage until they began to grow old. They now knew that there's no advantage in beauty. They know that advantage is favor. Beauty is on your face and on your body. Favor is in Zion. So you notice all the ugly girls around. When they are 24, they are married. And then you see the kind of men that marry them. One fair guy comes from Chevron and then he marries her. And then you, who was the boss queen, you now discover that the next time you people met, they are coming with two children, three children. They are going for vacation in Canada. Then when they go back home, they begin to cry. They begin to cry. Beauty is still intact, but favor is still what? In Zion. So if you want to travel from beauty to favor, it's by prayer. You can be a preacher, you think it's about oratory. I did oratory for 13 years. The worst part was when I backed my master's degree. That time, if I want to preach, I will add chemistry. I'll be preaching, I'll be talking about quantum mechanics because I did one of the hardest parts of chemistry. I'll be talking about the mysteries of light, the laws of theoretical physics. I was talking, I, I love mysteries those days. I will come, I will talk to you about the angelic realm. I will talk about the mysteries that govern the heavenly operation. I will tell you about the 12th civilization of heaven. But when I preached, my honorarium was 2000. I was preaching in one location for 13 years. Until I understood that this thing is God that makes men. So I shut down. I began to pray. I began to pray. And when I was praying, I was not receiving answers. As I prayed, what I was receiving were laws. God was introducing me to all kinds of laws. Because he was chiseling my soul so that he can conduct himself. I didn't know that pride, arrogance had choked every chamber of my soul. That the energy of God should flow through. I was speaking English, but I was not speaking spirit and life. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. The chambers of my soul was claw, pride, immorality, lust. Everything was there. I will be preaching and I will look at someone. Something will happen in my mind. This guy is fine. I didn't know what was going on. All of those things were impeding the flow of life. So when I began to pray, I now saw dimensions of prayer that was more than answers. I saw there is a dimension of prayer called reward. Jesus said, when you pray in secret, your heavenly father that sits in secret will reward you. He didn't say he will answer your prayers. I saw that reward was bigger than answers to prayer. The things I was praying for, I was praying for invitations. But I didn't see answers. I was receiving rewards. And rewards came as laws. The Holy Ghost put laws. Sometimes I go to a place, I labor. They will appreciate others and forget me. 
I will go back and cry. After a long time, it became normal. What I didn't know was that long suffering had been activated in my soul. The last one that happened, my friend that we were living together, both of us were sons of Apostle Arumi Osai. This is a good guy. He didn't do this thing to intimidate me, but God was moving him. And what he did was that I was a master's degree, a graduate that had a master's degree. This guy was an undergraduate. He was a pastor of a youth church. I was to be ordained a, a pastor in one of the global churches in this country because I was charismatic. God told me to join him. When I went to him, the guy went and put me in the auctioning department. And he told me, in this church, we grow by rank. I said, what do you mean? Me and you are Apostle Arumi's sons. Am I coming to your church to grow? As I wanted to say, the Holy Ghost banished my mouth like this. I did it for one year, eight months. That was when I discovered I was very arrogant. Because it's an honor to sweep the house of God, regardless of who you are. I didn't know all of those lessons. But when God was done teaching me, God now came to me and said, this year, I will begin to announce you. <laughs> the word was casual. I didn't fall under the power. What did he say? This year, I will begin to announce you. On my birthday, he said, cut six of your clip. The same old messages that have lasted, that didn't work. He said, cut six of those clip and put on Telegram. And now cut it. My friend, a young man who wouldn't let me rest, Samson Oson, he came and collected it. And he tagged it, Puritan capsules. And he dropped it online. In 14 days, I received invitation from 17 nations. 14 days was more important than 13 years. Because a spirit was sitting on the voice. <laughs> I saw the powers of prayer beyond everything that you can imagine. A spirit came and said, what? I will begin to announce you. My honorarium changed from 2,000 to 150,000. So the job that God stopped me from working, what I earn in a month is four times what I would have earned, either as a lecturer or as a naval officer. I got a window to become a naval officer. That was my ambition. God said, don't go there. My people could not understand. I thought you say you are looking for a job. Now you have a job in where you dream of. God said, don't go. Now, in three weeks, I turned down 30 invitations. I now knew that open door is not a function of intelligent preaching. The same way I knew transformation was not a function of doctrinal exegesis. It is the spirit that you communicate. But before you can communicate the spirit, something will happen to your soul. That's why I told you some of you what you call disgrace is actually a school of the spirit. Some of you what you call setback is a school of the spirit. There is something in you called pride. It will not allow the voice of God to be heard. Every time you are talking, your pride stands like this. It blocks God and people can't see God. And God wants you to communicate him. So what he will do is that he will break you. He will break you. When Jacob was traveling, he was traveling with the Abrahamic blessing. He was the only custodian of the Abrahamic blessing on earth. So by reason of ordination, he should prosper. But there was no way God could walk with him. When he touched the altars that Abraham built, prayer rose up to heaven and an angel showed up. He broke his thigh bone and he said as a prince, thou hast power with God and hast prevailed. So the reason the guy who ruled among men was not because he carried the blessing. It was because he became a prince. He was broken. The same song you sing can announce you to the nations. The hair you make can announce you to the nation. The only difference is for his spirit to alight on it. You can sell pure water and be a millionaire. The difference is for his spirit to alight on it. But before his spirit will fraternize with a man, he must accept the government of that spirit. This is where men are made. This is where stories of people are changed. But all of these things are born by prayer. If you don't pray, you can't perceive the windows of heaven. The atmosphere of Zion cannot crystallize on your soul. So every season in Jesus' life, he activated it by prayer. The Bible said he went to the wilderness. The Holy Ghost led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But when he was going to the wilderness, he changed the season. He altered it. That was a season of temptation. But by prayer, Jesus turned it to a season of promotion. So when he was coming down from what should be the mountain of temptation, he became the mountain of announcement. So he left the mountain of temptation. He came down. The Bible says his fame went abroad. According to heaven, it was a season of temptation. But prayer changed it to a season of announcement. You did not notice that when they were at the marriage feast in Canaan, the wine was finished. They thought it was time 
for scarcity. Mary came to Jesus and Jesus said, it is not yet my time. But Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That means if you can pray, you can change your seasons. The promotion that is for five years, you can change it and make it next week. If you can invest enough prayer to Zion, prayers can all tie your season and change it for good. Jesus changed the season of temptation into a season of promotion. It's a mystery in Zion. Prayer is deeper than everything you think it is. You will be on one spot if you don't master the art of praying. If prayer is not your operating system, you will remain on one spot. Even the things that were your advantage, the seasons will pass, you will not use them. It is only prayer that sets the coordinates of Zion aright so that everything that constitutes the advantage of a man can come into place and the purposes of God can be born. Only men of prayer can discern seasons and maximize them. When Jesus was born, the Pharisees were in the temple reading the laws of Moses and reciting the Torah. But there were three men that were praying. One of them was a woman. Her name was Anna, the prophetess. Another one was Simeon, the prophet. They were praying. The moment Jesus came, the Bible said, Simon went into the temple by the Spirit. The Spirit himself took him there. This is the season. Because he knew the intelligence of prayer. John showed out from the wilderness. And when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. How did he know him? Because he was separated in prayer. Some of you, your season will come, you will not recognize it. You will think it's, it's a season of disgrace. That's the time. That's what God has arranged for your glory. The reason God shrouded it in mystery is because if it is common, people can know it and take it away from you. The Bible said the mysteries, it said God have hid these things in mystery for your glory. But if you don't pray, you can't discern it. The things that should be your promotion, sometimes they come like insult. Sometimes they come like disgrace. It will take the eyes of discernment to see it. But the eyes of discernment are born on the altars of prayer. Abraham was trusting God for 25 years. The day the child came, he came as three men. Walking past his house and he said, Sars, Sars. He knew that these are not men. These are not men. He said, come into the house. They refused. He insisted. He said, sit down. Let me make supper. They refused. He insisted. When he fed them as they were living, God turned to him and said, in the next time of life, your wife Sarah will be with child. Faith of 25 years was consummated by a moment of discernment. The goal is prayer. You don't pray. When your answers come from heaven, you may not recognize it. This is why many believers are backward and they cannot make impact in their generation. If a man can pray, the man can turn the tides of heaven and cause the rain to fall in dry season. Elijah told the king that rain will fall, but the heavens were dry. He went on his knees and the Bible says seven times, seven times, he sent his servant go and look until he formed the feast by prayer. What appeared in heaven was not there. He formed it by prayer. He created that season by force because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man are valid God. He make a dynamic power available. They tell you your life will not work. They are joking. The only reason your life will not work is because you don't know the gate of prayer. If you know the intelligence of prayer, anything you want can happen. If only you can stay long enough. If you can stay long enough. When Elijah told the king rain will fall, the cloud was dry. But he knows that he knows how to pray. I know how to pray. Anything I say, I can make it happen on the altar. So he went to the altar. He created rain on the altar. He created it. He created rain on the altar. Nothing is difficult for a believer. If only he can pray. Your destiny can turn around in two weeks. The plague and the crisis you have experienced for 10 years, you can change it in two weeks. They told John Austin's wife she was going to die in three days. She gathered 40 scriptures and was tonguing on those scriptures. 40 days became three months. It became eight months. It became 10 years. She changed her story by prayer. Hannah came to Shiloh year in, year out. Nothing was happening. Everything she knew to do, she had given the seeds, she had given the sacrifices. Nothing was working. She left everybody and went to prayer. She prayed until her, her, her leaves were stammering. The priest saw her and thought she was drunk because of the depth she was praying from. And that day her story changed. 
people who are wise understand that prayer is one of the most potent infrastructure of downloading the dimensions of heaven you can bet your season by prayer you can create spiritual possibilities by prayer you can end temptations by prayer you can activate seasons by prayer but men are not praying we are looking up to people to change our story the secret is prayer that's why jesus dwelt on his knees all his life they saw him healing the sick every day they didn't tell him to teach them how to heal the sick they say teach us how to pray that means jesus prayed more than everything in his life they saw everything happening around him they knew that it was prayer that bettered it so they asked for the grace to pray he said they look up to him and they were radiant their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed how many can look up to him your story can turn around you can change your territory if only you pray enough until god is born on your inside then authority is conferred on your walls when you come to the territory it's a time to decree it's no longer a time to pray but you would have prayed at the backside men who changed their walls were men of prayer they were locked away in caves because they knew that only when you touch heaven can you change earth they knew they knew daniel was not in the palace a hand came and wrote on the wall and when they needed to know the meaning they went and invoked the man of prayer they knew that that kind of wisdom could not be crystallized in the palace only men that talk with spirits can get such wisdom and when he showed up he said mene, mene. this hand came from where i dwell the city where i travel to in the spirit that's where this hand came from i don't need a teacher to read it i know this language where i go to heaven this is the language they speak he said mene, mene. take care of a sin mene, mene. before the guy even he read the writing he went around and made a mockery of the king he said your father god gave him the kingdom and gave him power and authority he raised the kingdom and the dynasty touched the ends of the earth he said it was handed over to you and you came to worship the god of stone and iron he said therefore is this hand come mene, mene. take care of us sin he said you have been weighed on the balances how did he know how men are weighed who taught him that there is a system in the spirit for weighing men the errors of men are weighed and they say your kingdom has been divided from your hand and it has been given to the medics and the patients that night the king fell because a man came from the spirit realm you want to dwell in heaven the gateway is prayer you don't pray you can't be relevant there's not one man that changed this world without prayer even when god looked at the earth and he said he will destroy everything in the earth one man changed made god to change his mind his name was called noah he said noah found grace with god you will think noah was lucky the bible said god looked at the earth he said he will destroy man and beast nobody was qualified but there was something noah was doing it was when noah came out of the ark in genesis chapter 8 verse 20 that we knew what noah was doing that made noah develop the stature to cause god to change his mind he said noah raised an altar unto the lord so one man was more important than the whole world it's possible for one man to save a territory but he will need to know the dynamics of all tasks he must know the ways of prayer he may not be popular but he can sit in his bedroom and he say lord give the earth one more year of mercy and then you will think it's the number of churches that is making things happen the bible said in colossians 4 12 a papyrus is one of you a born servant of christ laboring fervently for you in prayer that you may stand perfect that means a whole nation was standing perfect because the papyrus was praying God rose up in Exodus 32. He said, I will wipe out Israel. How about the covenant he had with Abraham? He didn't count. And Moses will rise up in intercession and say, how do you want it to be heard? That's a man talking with God. Men are not the same, my brother. Men of prayer are ranking men in Zion. They consult with spirits. They talk to angels and they give commands from heaven. How do you want it to be heard? That you, the everlasting God, deliver them from captivity and destroy them in the wilderness he said repent Aye. i thought it's god that tell men to repent rank in the spirit you can come and speak over your family and things will change this is what the elders of old knew so when they bless their children they don't give them cattle. you will hear that abraham was old and stricken in age the lord had blessed him in all things when he wanted to settle isaac he didn't give him cattle. he said el shaddai keep you he gave he spoke that word he spoke even inflation cannot divide it 
when Isaac wanted to bless Jacob he didn't give him a cattle he said I bless you with the dew of heaven I bless you with corn and wine he gave him the seal of authority that he had in the spirit so Isaac anywhere he goes he will prosper anywhere Jacob goes he will prosper a man of prayer was talking from heaven they could curse you and if you like get a job with Chevron you will not prosper he told Jacob he told jo, uh, his first son Reuben he said you are at the beginning of my strength that means by reason of nature you should be a mighty man he said but as unstable as water you will not prosper he cursed the guy and the guy no matter what he did he couldn't prosper until another man of prayer came and Moses entered into heaven and he climbed into where Jacob was standing when he cursed Reuben and he said let Reuben live and not die they change systems by prayer they change civilizations by prayer they alter territories by prayer these men don't talk they talk after they have prayed you can walk to your family today and say i banish death and nobody will die you can come to your family today and look at your brother that graduated from the university and cannot get a job and you say you are settled and in one week his story can change if only you will pray enough there is a place in Zion where men are decorated with the badge of authority. But only men of prayer can travel there. And you rise up and pray for one minute.